Peace week. <coughs> Today we have Carl Bidwell, Hello. Peter Elliott, Hello. and me, Chris Bradley. And today we're going to be chatting with Pete about a new thing we've started with him, which might be a possible future thing we go with if it goes out well. <coughs> Basically, Pete being the young man that he is, younger than us, and only having about six DVDs in his collection, he hasn't got around to seeing many films, many of the classics. So we've set him a little thing of writing his own little review and likes and dislikes of films that are classics that he hasn't seen before. So we sat him down and got him to watch Braveheart. So Pete, let's hear about Braveheart then, for all those people who haven't seen it. Well, originally I've never seen Highlander. <laughs> and then you said I've got it so we couldn't find that and we saw also about watching Braveheart, so I said okay. So on top of my review, I started to write Highlander. I've got, I've got a H, I've crossed it out and then I've written Braveheart. <laughs> what it really was is you forgot Braveheart as soon as we said Braveheart, you sat down and wrote Highlander, no, Braveheart. Yeah, that happened. Yeah. <laughs> right, so I sort of <clears throat> made my notes as I went through, sort of making little notes to myself, and I got the first one, which is good opening music. I thought it was quite good opening music. Uh, then I've got bad haircuts. Well, pretty bad haircuts. Uh, there was a scene where there was a little bit of child abuse and then there were some children being hung. <laughs> it's it's all it's it's the the well, I've forgotten why I've written child abuse. I think some kid I think some kid got hit or something quite hard by his dad, so I can't have child abuse. And then children being hung was a bit where the main character as a young lad went into this sort of barn. I sort of hung, there were sort of, sort of the people being hung, and a lot of them were children. Well, they were already hung, weren't they? Yeah, so you just sort of, sort of already hung. Yeah. Dead people being hung. Well, <clears throat> and then I've got, it's quite a gory film. And I've got religious tones, and then I've got Catholic question mark. Now, why did you say religious tones, Pete? Explain. Because quite a lot of it, they do the whole, like, either they're praying, or they, and they do the whole thing, the father, son. There was one goes. burial scene, wasn't there? In the whole film, well, probably not in the whole film, but no, there, there were quite a few parts where they did the whole Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost at a burial. Parts. No, there are other parts of it as well. They did it once at a burial. <clears throat> no, they did it again where he says on a battlefield. That's on the think? battlefield, though. That was this was about I don't know twenty minutes into the film. All right then. Well then, we'll move on for that bit. <laughs> <laughs> we'll explain that one later. Uh, then we've got uh, the little boy who keeps having dreams where he can see dead people. So the first dream he has. He rolls over and his dad's next to him, dead, talking to him. So you just wrote, uh, he sees dead people. <laughs> and then underneath <laughs> that, a dad and one and another dream. One of the one of the kids that was yeah. hung turned around. So that's why like the sixth him. sense. Yeah, yeah I've never seen sixth sense. Oh, oh for, right. But I know, but that's why I knew the whole. I see dead people. <laughs> okay. Dead people. Okay. And then I've got who was the first person to pull a cow tit and came out. <laughs> Why have you written that? What fucking relevance is that? Got? I think, I think we, we sort of talked halfway through about like, oh, who do you reckon was the first person to like pick something out of the ground and like cook it and eat it? And then I think I said something like, what, Did we? We, for some reason it came yeah, up. But, and then I, and then I said, who, and then we said something about who do you reckon was the first person to like try and milk a cow? Yeah, well, I, I thought it was when we saw. Why a cow. is it in your review of Braveheart though? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, run through your mind. You saw yeah. a cow, you wanted to milk it, and well, you wanted who did it first. Necessarily, yeah, but right then. And then I've got um, the Prince of England. He's got hair like super noodles. <laughs> because his hair looks like super noodles. And then the Princess of France, his wife, her hair's just too long. <laughs> too long? Her hair's just too long. It was like down to her knees. <laughs> How was that too long? I thought it was too long. <laughs> she's, not, she's not using heavy machinery or anything. So <laughs> it's too long for me. And then I've got... Uh, at one point they were, they were having... What was it say? Shit party. <laughs> shit party. They just... When, like, 
Pyro was very upset. Because when they were the Pyro, was there? It was. Because that's when the, the British first came in and announced that they're gonna that the king was gonna sleep with every like every woman who just got married. Oh, so it was at the Scottish party. <clears throat> yeah, the Scottish oh, right. party, and it just looked like a pretty shit party. <laughs> The party seemed all right. I thought yeah. it was the, it was the guy came. He ruined it, but yeah. and then there was um, you've dropped your rock. <laughs> what? Where the where the young lads, um, when the young lads grown up, his sort of childhood friend comes back and just throws a big stone at his feet <coughs> and just says, "You've dropped your rock." And then I've got um, massive relevance. Why have you if, why have you written that down? I just thought it was a bit funny. <laughs> you've dropped your rock. <laughs> okay, okay, moving on. We've got, um, there's no L in worm. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> he goes, he goes, he can't he go, Scottish. Because when he picks up the rock, he goes, do you reckon you can hit me with it? And he goes, ah, you'll squash you like a worm. <laughs> Uh, so one of them speaks proper English and one of no, them no, speaks no, Scottish. Scottish. <laughs> one of them just happened, one of them go, one of them just says, I'll squash you like a, like a worm. It says, because it's Scottish, it goes, I'll squash you like a worm. <laughs> there's no L in hay, but. Sounds like it's a worm. <laughs> And then I've got, uh, he's a prick. He's <laughs> a prick. I thought to myself, who? And then right afterwards, I read, he's a prick, bloke on horse. So that helps even more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that, that was, when, that was the, the British bloke who, who, who comes and says, I'm going to sleep with every woman who's just got married. I thought you said it was the old guy. No, that was the bloke on the horse. Oh, just the bloke on the horse then. Yeah, that's what he up. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Because there's not many of them in that film. And then I've got... Uh, casually having a bucket of fur. <laughs> what? Having a bucket of fur, Pete? Oh, because at one point, the, the woman the bloke falls in love with, she literally, there's just cuts to a scene of just like the village and she's just walking past with a bucket of fur and she moves it from one bucket to another bucket. <laughs> Why have you written that down? I just like, thought it was a bit funny. Was, what, just casually with a bucket of fur. <laughs> This is, you know, this is meant to be for people who've never seen this film before. So when they go into it, they're expecting to see a woman with a bucket of fur and, and be were. amazed. And they were. Okay. <laughs> and then I've got um, popping a mad wheelie on a horse. There goes your tea. What was that about, Pete? I'm <laughs> dribbling. <laughs> Why did you have to say that I was drinking my tea? It's good everywhere. I thought you were So where did you see this <coughs> popping of a man? There's just a scene where she, like, she like, turns around, looks to a landscape, and there's just him on a horse on his back legs, and like he's popping a mad wing on a horse. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh, what? Cast will die. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Okay, move on. Next one. I've got a uh, priest. Nice beard. <laughs> what was so nice about it? <laughs> it was just what did you write about it? I know, it was just quite like rectangular. It was kind of trimmed quite square. <coughs> and um, <coughs> he, pop- he's, he pops up a few times. But, like He's right at the start and the burial, and then he's when he marries him. So he, he just say he just popped up a few times. So he- twice? No, he's in a few times later after this. When? Uh, when on the battlefield and they've got all the monks in front of them, you see him there. Is he there, is he? Yeah. Okay, so three times. You still got a nice beard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, then I've got a uh, nice side boob. <laughs> what happened there? Uh, it's where they, the man and the woman get married in secret. I like this man and woman the whole time. <laughs> yeah, they <laughs> who are they? Completely <laughs> forgotten their name. <laughs> William Wallace. <laughs> so, wait, when wait, you wrote this review, you had no wait. names written down at all in this. No, not at all. Why not, eh? You're going to write down now so you don't forget who was in it and who it was about. He's now writing it down. William Wallace has written down. Okay, so... Uh, and there's a scene where they get married at night in the woods in secret with the priest with the good beard. <laughs> and then they have their first night together and she's sort of naked at the side when he gets a bit of side boob. Then she turns around, so I've got a bit of front boob, 8 out of 10 peats. <laughs> You get to see a bit of, bit of front there. Not a bad set, actually. You quite like that, didn't you? Not a bad set. So I saw your pen go straight to paper as soon as I <laughs> yeah, and it was like, yeah, of course, there he goes. And then I've got, um, I've got face licking rape. <laughs> what? Because one of, the, one of the blokes, the bloke was like, I want to sleep with every every woman when she's first married. Yeah. And he then realises that um, William Wallace is married to this woman. Okay. And so they try and like corner her and try and rape her and when he gets on the floor the first thing he does is just lick her face. 
<laughs> he tries kissing her and he turns away. He's there is a slight flaw in, in that explanation there, Pete, because you obviously weren't paying attention. Well, first of all, that wasn't the guy on the horse. It was a different That was just a guard okay, that wanted a bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and secondly, they didn't know him and Ma- uh, Wallace were married. <laughs> well, they noticed it because like, they saw him like, together in the t- middle of the village. And? <laughs> Well, I thought they noticed it from that. No, they just he just wanted it a bit. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, because he went up to her and said, "You remind me of my daughter back home," and then licked her face. And she <laughs> face looking rape. I'm Pete. Listen to more of my nonsense, like Pete's Week on Facebook, and subscribe to us at, at www. Sorry, YouTube.com forward slash user forward slash Pete's Week. Cheers, bye.